Famous South Florida rapper Kodak Black is back in jail. The rapper, whose real name is Bill Capri, is being held at the Miami Federal Detention Center for violating his probation. This is linked to a case from 2019 when he pleaded guilty to lying on a background check. Capri was also arrested earlier this month in Plantation on drug charges. Throughout the history of hip-hop, numerous rappers have found themselves on the wrong side of the law, leading to high-profile court cases and, in some instances, prison sentences. Wife and Lucy, born Rayshon Lamar Bennett on February 16, 1991, in Atlanta, Georgia, rose to fame in the hip-hop scene with his unique voice and catchy hits like key to the streets and every day we lived. However, Wyatt found Lucy's career took a dramatic turn when he found himself entangled in serious legal issues. In May 2021, he was indicated on multiple charges including felony murder and a sweep 105 count racketeering indictment linked to alleged activities of the Blood Street Gang. The right to subpoena witnesses and compel the production of evidence. The right to have the charges against you proven beyond a reasonable doubt. The right to appeal if convicted after trial. Yes. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter this guilty plea? No. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea because you are in fact guilty? Yes. How do you plead to count 69 in indictment 23 SC 188921? Guilty. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with full knowledge of the charge against you? Yes. Do you understand that you have a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes. Do you understand that you have four years from today to file a habeas corpus? petition challenging the voluntariness of your plea. Yes. The charges were serious, implicating him in a range of criminal activities from murder to assault. The case against Lucy was built around his alleged role in a December 2020 shooting in Atlanta, which resulted in the death of a 28-year-old man and injuries to another. According to prosecutors, Lucy was the driver in the drive-by shooting, although he did not fire the shots himself. This incident was part of a broader pattern of alleged gang-related activities that led to his indictment. As the court proceedings unfolded, Lucy faced a potential life sentence without parole. However, after negotiations, he entered a plea deal in January 2024. Under the terms of this deal, Lucy pleaded guilty to a single count of violating the Georgia Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act. The plea agreement significantly reduced his sentence to 10 years, with a stipulation that he would serve only about 3.5 months in jail, with a remainder on probation. This deal also included provisions for parole and a commitment from the prosecution not to oppose his early release. Throughout his legal challenges, Lucy maintained a significant presence in the media and continued to influence the music industry. The Shade Room said, Wife and Lucy has turned himself into authorities in connection to a murder he was allegedly involved in. TMZ has obtained the 911 call that led to his arrest. In the audio, a woman tells authorities that she witnessed a man being thrown out of an SUV after being shot in the head. The accusation is that his music career and public persona were used as a front for deeper gang activities. Vlad TV does an interview with a black celebrity, says Mercy. Suddenly, news come out for their arrest warrant. You cannot tell me this shit was a coincidence. I don't like wife and Lucy, but Vlad a straight up informant. And he just did an interview with him. Just into the 11 Alive newsroom, Atlanta rapper YFN Lucci was sentenced to 10 years in prison. The rapper, whose real name is Ray Sean Bennett, pleaded guilty to one count of violation of the Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act. He is one of a dozen men indicted on racketeering and RICO charges back in 2021. The group's charges are related to alleged involvement with the Bloods Street Gang. According to court documents, prosecutors could write a letter to the parole board recommending release when eligible, but records show 
He has been in jail for nearly three years. Moving to Young Thug. Young Thug born Jeffrey Lamar Williams on August 16, 1991 in Atlanta, Georgia, is a highly influential rapper, singer, and songwriter known for his eccentric vocal style and fashion. He first gained major attention in 2013 with his mixtape, 1017 Thug and has since become a defining artist in hip-hop. Known for hits like Stoner and Best Friend, Young Thug is also the founder of the record label Young Stoner Life YSL, which has signed several successful artists. Young Thug's impact on the rap genre is notable for his experimental approach to rap music, which has influenced many younger artists. His album, Jeffrey, featured tracks each named after his idols, showcasing his reverence for diverse influences. Thug's collaborative album with Future, Super Slimy, and his work with artists like Guna and Lil Baby have cemented his status as a key figure in shaping contemporary trap music. But Young Thug has faced several legal issues throughout his career. The 2015 incident Young Thug was arrested for drug and gun violations, which marked the beginning of a series of legal challenges related to weapons and narcotics, where a witness testified about this incident and the RICO charges of 2022. The most significant legal challenge came in May 2022 when Young Thug was arrested and indicated on conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act RICO, and participation in criminal street gang activity. Prosecutors allege that his record label YSL is a front for the Bloods gang operations. The indictment includes charges against multiple individuals and outlines acts of violence and drug trafficking. I kept a gun. I, I, mean, I don't mean I don't like being around a gun. I kept a gun for protection. Though. When were you arrested for, um, for these charges involving the shooting on April 22nd? At Mr. Williams' house. In July of 2015, did you have a reputation and a background for being considered Mr. Williams' brother? Brother, friend. 2015. Were you concerned that being linked to certain people would get you killed in a week? No. Rap House TV said, Meek Mill says a young thug should be on house arrest while he fights his trial after his sister passed away. Pray for Thugga. But young thug paid zero to no care as he was captured listening to music. Better, he was jamming to music in court during his trials. Following his arrest, young thug remained in jail awaiting trial, with his bond being denied multiple times. The case has drawn significant attention due to its implications for freedom of expression, as lyrics and social media posts were used as part of the evidence against him. The legal proceedings are expected to be lengthy, with significant debate over the interpretation of artistic expression versus promotion of illegal activities. Now let's move to Fetty Wap. He's legally known as Willie Jr. Maxwell II. He was implicated in a widespread federal crackdown targeting drug trafficking networks. He was sentenced to six years in prison after admitting to conspiring to distribute significant quantities of cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, and crack cocaine across Long Island and New Jersey. This sentencing reflected the operation's large scale, underscored by substantial seizures, including over $1.5 million in cash, numerous firearms, and other contraband. The legal proceedings against Maxwell highlighted a serious lapse in judgment, contrasting sharply with his public persona as a successful musician known for his hit, Trap Queen. A law enforcement source said that FBI agents arrested the rapper at City Field on the drug charges. Six members of a drug distribution ring were charged with dealing heroin and fentanyl during the Rolling Loud Music Festival. The 30-year-old rapper from Patterson, New Jersey was allegedly part of the group. Exact charges against the rapper will be unsealed later Friday morning. Further complicating his legal situation, Maxwell's bail was revoked due to a separate incident. He was accused of wielding a firearm and issuing threats during a FaceTime call. Actions led directly to his incarceration prior to sentencing. This incident illustrated the ongoing challenges and risks associated with individuals involved in high-stakes criminal behavior, despite their statuses or backgrounds. Austin Carter said, LVMPD arrested rapper Fetty Wap last night after allegedly punching three employees at the Mirage Hotel Casino. A hotel staff member reportedly made a citizen's arrest and held Fetty until officers got there. He's facing three counts of battery, 
Say to said, Fatty Wap speaks out for the first time since arrest. I'm on borrowed time. If it ain't life, it ain't over. As he posted on Instagram, loyalty can be both a great trade and a deadly one. Choose wisely with who you stand with, but never change what you stand for. Never bend, never fold. Head up like a nosebleed. I'm on borrowed time. If it ain't life, it ain't forever. I'll be back better, wiser, and smarter. I forgot to address this, sir, but uh, your comment on the, the drunk driving part of this? No yeah, there's no comment. No comment. Moving to Tory Lanes. Tory Lanes, legally known as Daystar Peterson, was embroiled in significant legal battle following an incident on July 12, 2020, with Megan Thee Stallion, whose real name is Megan Pete. This confrontation occurred after a gathering at Kylie Jenner's home and escalated dramatically as Lanes allegedly shot at Megan's feet while she was leaving the vehicle. Megan Thee Stallion publicly accused Tory Lanes of shooting her, which led to his arrest and subsequent charges. The charges against Lanes included assault with a semi-automatic firearm, possession of a loaded, unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and discharging a firearm with gross negligence. Despite Lanes pleading not guilty, the case moved forward to a trial that would captivate public attention and stir considerable debate about issues surrounding celebrity culture and victim advocacy. The prosecution argued that the motive behind the shooting was a bruised ego, triggered when Megan criticized Lane's musical talents during a heated argument. This argument supposedly provoked Lane's to act violently towards Megan. After thorough deliberations, the jury found Lane's guilty, leading to a sentencing of 10 years in prison. This sentence was a culmination of careful examination of the evidence presented, which included testimonies detailing the events that transpired that night, the subsequent impacts on Megan, and her enduring physical and emotional distress. TMZ broke the story of Megan the salient injured foot being from broken glass and Tory Lane's arrest for an unregistered gun, Harriet Eve Nine said. A few days later, Megan went to her IG account to announce that her injury was not from glass. There was an argument in the car? It, it was an argument because I was ready to go and everybody else wasn't ready to go. But that's like normal yes. friend stuff. Like, yeah. we fuss about silly, silly stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. But... I never put my hands on anybody. I never raised my voice too loud. Like, this was one of them times where it was like, it shouldn't have got this crazy. It shouldn't have escalated to right. the way that it did. So I get out the car, and it's like everything happens so fast. And all I hear is this man screaming, is, he said, dance, bitch. And he starts shooting. And I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, he shot a couple of times. <laughs> And I, I so was is so he scared. in the car shooting from the car, Megan? He Alexi? is standing up over the window okay. shooting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even want to move. I didn't want to move too quick. Like, because I'm like, oh my God, if I take the wrong step, I don't know if he can shoot something that's like super important. I don't know if he could shoot me and kill me. Like, Were you afraid for your life at that I time? I was really scared because I had never been shot at before. Finally, Kodak Black, whose legal name is Bill K. Capri, has encountered significant legal issues spanning various allegations and convictions which have deeply impacted his music career and personal life. His legal entanglements include serious charges ranging from weapons, violations to sexual assault. Black's legal troubles escalated significantly in 2019, when he was arrested just before his performance at the Rolling Loud Music Festival for falsifying information on federal forums to purchase firearms. He pleaded guilty to these charges and was sentenced in November 2019 to 46 months in federal prison. The firearms he acquitted were later linked to several incidents, including one found at a shooting scene, which compounded the severity of his situation. His sentence was influenced by his previous criminal record and the nature of the crimes, indicating a pattern of behavior that the courts aimed to curtail. In another serious case, Black faced allegations of sexual assault 
stemmed from an incident in 2016 involving a teenage girl in South Carolina. The rapper was accused of committing sexual battery in a hotel room following his performance. In this case, he eventually entered a plea deal, pleading guilty to first-degree assault and battery, which allowed him to avoid a potentially lengthy sentence. Instead of a longer term, he was sentenced to 18 months of probation, conditional on undergoing counseling. This plea acknowledged the severity of the allegations while also providing Kodak with an opportunity for rehab. Throughout his legal battles, Kodak Black's defense strategies have involved negotiating plea deals that mitigate potential sentences. His legal team, recognizing the complexities of his high-profile status and repeated offenses, often aimed to reduce incarceration time, arguing for his young age and the potential for rehab. The judges overseeing his cases have generally taken a firm stance reflecting both the seriousness of his offenses and his repeated run-ins with the law. For example, during the weapons charges sentencing, U.S. District Judge Federico Moreno emphasized the need for tough love and expressed skepticism about Kodak's ability to stay out of trouble, even suggesting that the rapper should continue his charitable activities behind the bars. Holy Gabbana said, When I reached out the first time, people said I was tripping. He's y'all favorite rapper, so y'all judgment was biased, but that's what's wrong with society today. Too many yes men in the circle and nobody around to tell people the hard truth, which could possibly save someone's life. Mentioning Kodak Black. Thank you for joining us on The Realm, having a scoop on the lives of those in the fame field and what's going on during their journey. Goodbye!